What's up, guys? How are we doing here? This is a new uh, little MXP TV commentary feature. Uh, um, I appreciate everyone doing the live watch parties and stuff recently. It's been great. Um, looking back at the older videos, stuff like that. But I figured I'd chime in on kind of talking a little backstory on some of my uh, older videos, some of my um, past top videos um, here on the YouTube channel and everything. So uh, we're still quarantined here in Delaware still. So we still got to do these little live stream mic stuff and everything. So uh, pretty pumped to, um, you know, still do these and stuff and everything. And and um still do stuff on the channel i mean i know i haven't been to much places in a while but uh you know but i think just talking about the older videos is always great so uh we're gonna dive right in here we're gonna talk about the sounds of the nationals video uh, for 2015 it's the best of video i did um it was my best footage from the 2015 lucas oil promoter Coast series um i was fortunate to get the opportunity to be um i was actually produced and directed the uh pre-race show for the series for this um for this year and i was uh, we had a crew there it was um you know, me, Dylan Gwaltney, uh, Joe Kolick, um, staff there with NBC Sports, helping us out at, at a bunch of races. Um, uh, ben Lynn was a big help as far as the uh, live aspect of it, trying to connect everything up. So he was a big help as well. Uh, you know, Danny Stewart, you know, all these guys. Um, we had some good guys that were helping capture footage for us at all the races. So I uh, appreciate all their help. And, um, you know, it was a, it was an interesting year. You know, it was, just, it was kind of a – for for the pre-show side, it was kind of the fir a first for – ally and the and NBC sports and promote across combined so it was kind of like a first foundation year i treated it as and uh you know it was uh it was it was a good it was a good experience i mean it was hard working it's probably the hardest i ever worked on a on a gig ever and uh, you know just spent the whole summer basically on the road uh, drove to all 12 rounds that year so uh, it was a lot of good road trip stories there from that so it was a good time and uh, maybe we'll dive into that while we're watching this so uh, let's go check it out right in here and we'll talk a whole bunch while we're watching the video so here we go this is um hangtown starting off this round was was a crazy round for the production side for us because it was our first round it's it's out of all the rounds in the series this is basically the most watched round out of all 12. this is the opening round everyone's gonna be watching so um so there's a lot of pressure for the live show uh you know to get off right and it, it got off on a it was probably a 50 50 show it was either good or was bad and it was um it had some issues but you know we kind of worked through them to the best we can and you know um and glenn helen we approved the next week and stuff but it was just such a situation where you know i did some live shows had some experience you know between national broadcast stuff with um i've done stuff for cbs and nascar things like that and uh, college football games and whatnot but you know direct to produce your own that's a whole different story and in 2015 they weren't wasn't as easy as you could do one like say right now right now it's so easy to do a live thing right now it's it's ridiculous i mean i wish i had this set up <laughs> in 2015 to, or in you know 2015 to do this show but um as you can see here in hangtown um uh, this is the race i saw a whole bunch of tomac there tomac ran away this, this is the uh day i don't know if it's the first or second moto but he ran away both motos um the one moto he ran by over a minute i think it was the first moto and as you can see um if you watched this video before um, this is all second moto footage. This is all I got. This is all my footage, by the way, through this, all those videos. is not over a cruise and stuff. This is just all my stuff I was able to get. The first motos, I was cleaning up the set. <laughs> I was cleaning up the set, the cabling. You know, I was, I was, I, during, during these shows, I played a lot of hats. So, um, you know, I was creating everything, doing all that and stuff. So it was a hectic first round. And once it was over, I was like, all right, let's, let's, let's get back to track here and everything. Glen Helm, next round. Um, Glen Helm was much better. Just a uh, you know better live show production. We were better prepared, um, better segments produced, and everything as well. Um, I think it worked out very well um, with that. So um, you know, Glenhound's an awesome track. I don't think I've ever been here for a national before. I've been I've been here for practice days. I've been there for um, other events. Actually, Rebel X Fighters. I think it was like two weeks before this, I believe, and we just happened to you know we got a press pass for it and covered it and. It didn't really work out because it was too windy and they ended up canceling it, so that was kind of a wash event. But um, but it was, um, you know, Glenhound's a cool place going up the hills there. I mean, it is true. Like, I always heard, like, when you go there, yeah, you, you can definitely tell the hills on how steep they are and how hard to walk up. Of. You know, like, Mount St. Helens is a hike to go up. It's no joke. I mean, this is, that's the bottom of the turn to go up the hill. But, um, like, this shot right here at Cincinnati and Osborne battling out. This was cool. Side by side, rough. Getting kicked all over the place. Osborne cut him off, take the line. <laughs> Just pretty cool. Um, this was a. Uh I never, I, I never walked up the hill. I mean, I think I was just too tired from the production of just getting the shit live show done. Like these motos for me, after the live show was done, was like, okay, I can go back to shooting what I like doing. <laughs> In a way, just kind of. This is, this is, 
this is the passion part of it, you know, just going out and capturing all this stuff. I've always, this is, you know, if there's any races I want to cover and capture, it's it's usually the pro motocross races. Those are always fun. There's a lot of um, freedom to kind of get the angles wherever you can, you know, within reason, obviously. Don't cross the track. Big heads up there. Um, don't pull a Stewart thing, but um, I thought it would that year. But uh, other than that, <laughs> you can be creative. You can kind of get, you're outside, you're kind of, you're in the element and stuff and everything, and the buyers are close, you know. You know, so, so here I only did the second mode as well. First mode was I was, you know, janitor for our crew, <laughs> clean up everything, so. Um, a lot of cool stuff here, um, you know. But these shots too as well, I always kept in mind of the environment around me. Um, these actually, these Sounds Dash videos were, were videos I did from each round. Um, you know that would post after the race usually monday tuesday or whatever after the race we'll post like a sounds the nationals um video from that round so those videos are up on youtube on the uh, promoter coast channel and stuff so you can go check that out um after you watch this but um as you can see here tomac's just in another world this section was crazy it's got a little rock ledge in the middle there and they were treating it as basically like a little jump like a little hip jump type situation like a hip step up type jump like jumps up into the turn on the gas rolling just that stuff's just, it's something, you know, top riders can only do. And I tried doing that. My bike be blooped out, risky thralled up the mountain, whatever. Bike's gone forever. <laughs> so, but yeah, these two rounds, Tomac was on fire. Could not stop him. You know, just, it was like, there was early, early talk of pre perfect season again, 24 0. But um, at Thunder Valley, it kind of stopped <laughs> very abruptly for him. And uh, it's unfortunate. And, you know, we really like to see what he could have done, you know. With um, with that oppressive, I don't think we've seen a start like that to an outdoor series probably since like a Carl Michael Stewart when they had the perfect seasons, I think. But you don't normally see people, you know, a person winning by a minute, you know, right off the bat. So, um, so yeah, here at the Thunder Valley, this was um, another. Fun, I like this track. You can see a lot of it. It's a really really nice layout. Um, I'm not. I'm from Delaware, so I have no idea about altitude. So I got the wake-up call here. I think the first time I was here in 2011, 2012. I think when they ran a race here. Um, I think 2012 was the first time I was there, and you're gasping for air. <laughs> so it's not a. Uh, it's not a normal spot to be, you know, as far as anywhere else. So, so the altitude comes into effect. Come to effect as far as um, you know your your body, but also the bike itself. But I think with these bikes being fuel ejected too, you really didn't have much to worry about um, as far as bikes up. You had a little changes, but. So yeah, Tomac here, probably a minute or two after that clip right there, that's where he separated his shoulders, and that was the season for him, and that turned the table again, it was, you know, that was the big change, and then here, Muddy Creek, 250 class going off, I mean, that, that, it's crazy how 2015 and 2012, just overall in the 450 class, how they both really similarly changed the aspect of the series, and for one rider, because... In 2012, it was Dungey and Stewart going at it for the points lead and stuff. It was basically back and forth between them. It was going to look like it would be a great series. And then Stewart had his crash at, in 2012 at Thunder Valley in the same exact spot where Tomac hid his in 2015. And then you fast forward to 2015, Tomac has his crash. Actually, by, that shot, by the way, he just missed right there. The plane going by, that was not planned. That was awesome. Actually, I should have said I planned it because I planned a private jet to fly through my shot. So it was actually an airport nearby Muddy Creek there, so it was cool. But, um, but yeah, back to that, in 2015, Tomac crashes pretty much in the same exact spot, and Dungey is basically takes over the points lead and wins the title. Exactly the same way as he, I believe he won the title in 2012. So, it, it's it's crazy how two events that could be so similar happen three years apart in that same exact part of the track. So, um, little Geico shoot right there with, uh, with those Craig and Smith going at it. So... Get the mechanics yelling. Gotta get them yelling. It's always that's part of it, you know. And it's just trying to get those guys. Um, you know, it's ca again capture the atmosphere of the nationals. That's what that's the whole point of these videos was. I mean, raw videos are always great to see, but because of it is because it's the sound. You know, the starts. You know, the start of a four of forty four fifties going up the start straight. I mean, that's that's something that just brings chills through your spine. So, and right here, buddy Phil Nicoletti taking the lead early. But he will have company very soon with uh, Anderson and <laughs> Dungey behind him. So uh, I've known Phil since he's been on 60s, I believe. So back in upstate New York. So you know, so it was, it was awesome to see him out front, pumped for him for sure. But at this point, we were like, yeah, Dungey has got this series on lock, and it was early to know that. But we knew because Dungey was that good, 
you know, you can't ever, ever count him out. Bag it over jump there, Freddy Norn, right there, battle a little bit. Just those little, little battle highlights sometimes that like you don't see on TV, you know, and that's where I kind of hopefully filled that void, you know, try to cover those angles that TV may not get, because they, they'll battle, they'll take, a, they'll, they'll take care of the lead, battle for the lead, top three spot all day long. Be that battle for 6th, 7th could be something big too, so you never know. You know, Rock's a defending champion, try to try to make it work on the RCH Suzuki bike, so. I got like close race in there, you know, just side by side stuff. Fans going crazy. Can't go better, can't go wrong on that, you know. But, you know, just to show how tough it is. I mean, the TV cameras will give you kind of your normal view of everything and generalized view of how things look. But I think when you're on the track shooting next to this track and you're just like that close to the riders and you can see how brutal, how tough it is. Like the riders slipping, like Cole see like they're slipping out a little bit. It just shows how tough it actually is because it's 30 minutes plus two laps. There's no cake in the park. It's, it's no walk in the park at all. It's not a piece of cake ride. That's a tough, tough ride to do. So champagne celebrations are always great until they get splattered with it. So. I was camera left a little sticky after that, so I had a little cleanup on that one. Yeah, champagne tires are great until you get hosed. So um, here's high point here. High point, another great track to shoot at. Um, it's kind of limited as far as like getting the spots and everything, but I mean, if you get the right spots figured out, you know, it's good. Like that one, I think I don't know if I was late to the start of that one or I don't know, but like I just filmed above the crowd and did that. Getting close to the mechanics area, this was close. It felt really closer than it actually is, because I'm probably like a foot away from these guys as they're going by, so... You know, putting your elbow over the railing with the camera out, they're going that fast, it's... <laughs> it's kind of scary, but that's the fun of it. I had to shut up there, because Stein came to 125, you guys want to hear that, so I shut up. But here's Marvin. Look at that little twitch at that ramp there. That is... That's a little thing I noticed where I'm just like, yeah, any normal person would have done. That could have been a Brock Schmelly moment. <laughs> so, that stuff, um, I'm the same as that jump. And it's just, those moments are tough. Close ballot. Like, see, battles like that, you may not catch on TV, but you're able to catch, you know, where I've been able to help get it. You know, it's always good to get that stuff. There's Marvin grabbing away. Marvin always did good at high point. I don't know, I think just the way the track was. It's a very European style track. Um, I. You know, I think I remember reading a story about High Point, how it first started, like a lot of some European guys came over and, you know, saw this as a good place to probably start a track and, you know, and Coons family runs it now and they've been doing a great job with it ever since, so this place is definitely national caliber, for sure. Tough, rough, you know, deep, lonely, rough turn and stuff, so. <laughs> I just see Jeremy Norton not entirely pumped with a podium ride. But he wants some of the championships, so he's got other, other things on his mind. He wants to have the red plate. He don't want to be uh, um, playing second field of the championship, which you know he's won before. So, so it was just really weird seeing him walk up and be like, "Shucks, I that sucked," you know. Where, dude, you got on the podium. It's great, but that's on his mindset. His mindset's to win because he he wants the points. He wants to. Cause he's been this grand before. This is on the uh, Carmichael double area. This is on the tunnel jump on the outside of the track. Actually, I was I was outside the fence line doing this because I wanted to get different angles. Like this, as the nationals go on each round, you could you know stay on the side of the track like this, get shots like this all day long. Justin, panic grabbing right there, getting a little front end, not too low, but just like that jump had no like no lip to it, so it was tough. So, but at these nationals though, you try to I always try to get different angles and. You try to get the same angles as kind of everyone else. So sometimes I would do is go off, you know, go where the fans are. You know, that's always an angle to catch. You know, so some sections I did that. So um, you know, so like the Carmichael double right there on the outside there in that tower there. That's where I stood for the last uh, start shot earlier. Um, just something outside the norm. You know, where not media is, but it kind of gives you a better angle. I mean, about a better angle, but something different. So all that rocks and dungy battle here. This section was gnarly. Just just got that inside line, which is so unpredictable. So Rock's taking the win there. Bud's Creek, fun around here. This is the fun round. Uh, one of my local rounds and stuff. Um, I live about two and a half hours from here, so this is more of the local rounds and stuff. You uh, and Dale's more on my local round, but we'll get to that a little later. Um, but this one was probably my, I would say, shining moment of the series, even though it was really muddy. Um, now, these shows, ever since um, we did 
live shows we did at Hangtown, Glen Helen, were live. Uh, the rest have been pre-recorded until Iron Man, which we did the last round. We did Iron, we did the live show for that. So the obviously muddy conditions here, buds, and it was very, very, very uh, messy. But uh, but also we had a delay in the races. Um, we had a there was a storm delay and stuff. This was close. <laughs> right, they go up like that. So I said these guys can pull it off somehow. But uh, you know, Cooper Webb doing his thing. But uh, I mean. So there was a delay because there was a storm delay, and the track just got rough, and it just got almost flooded out to the point where you know it got pretty nasty. So here's Alex Martin coming through. He would actually take the overall win, I believe. Totally pumped on there. You know, his brother came by. It was a good day for Alex right there. Grab that win. And um, so the rain's not really hit yet. It rained earlier today, obviously, but it's just it's still muddy. It's still pretty nasty out there. Um, as you see these motos too, I'm actually shooting all four motos now because we did pre-record, so we had time to go out there and shoot the first moto and stuff, so, or at least I did. Um, as you can see right here, just, I mean, you could just tell the rain's coming, the rain's coming, but, um, it's, it's, it's coming, the clouds are getting a little darker out and everything. There's Justin Starling heading by on the Traders bike. Traders is actually local to here, so it's cool to see them, so champagne showers, can't go wrong with that. Someone's getting a little thirsty there, there you go. And here's 450 Moto 1, which 450 Moto 2 would be completely, completely different because that's after that was after the rain delay. So um, this is probably the best track, best track they're gonna see all day long for these 450 guys. And uh, a little carnage through there. Here comes Dunchy through. He's like he's he's looking a lot better this moto than he will in 10 Moto 2. <laughs> Let's put it that way. So um, yeah, he had this one pretty much on lockdown stuff. But this would be a turning slight turning point in the series here, at buds, because. Not only with Tomac crashing out Thunder Valley earlier, but this round was be um, 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 we would have somebody new challenge Dungey and battle for the wins and stuff, and it'd be the number fifty one as he makes it past there on rocks in there. So, and um, I think just that New York roots. Here's the fears second story of second mode as you can see, just completely wet. Everyone's just. <laughs> It actually didn't look that bad for everyone. Did. I watched all the way to the left, upper left. See Dungey right there? Watch him hit the case. Boom. Over the bars. He's over the bars, down. And you'll see later, he has no front fender on his bike. Uh, front fender came off in that crash. And he is way back. I don't know where he finished exactly. I think he was off the podium, but like fourth or fifth or something like that. So Justin's leading. Now, Justin, I have known Justin for plenty of years. And um, as you can see there, Dungey, no front fender at all. Um, when conditions are like this, Justin seems to shine a little bit more than everyone else. I think he just turned into a fun ride, fun buddy ride day, uh, which he's done with, you know, since he was a kid, you know, he's, he's enjoyed these days and it's, it's just, it's kind of like fun out in a pit, sand pit, mud pit, whatever, and, and do with that. So like a lot of that showed up during that race when I was watching him lead that race and it was like, Ooh, that's a confidence booster for him. He's going to do good. As you can see, like I said, <laughs> flying through the podium there. <laughs> That was a very happy Justin right there, taking the win there, and it was a slow turning point in the series there. It was like, yep, he needs to work on his champagne spray a little bit. Let me give him a little heads up on that. Boosting the crowd, I don't know if that's allowed, but I don't care. It's awesome. Buds fans, awesome. So, but that was a big turning point because Justin turned it up here at Redbud. And by the way, Lurch on the mic there for that piece, that little transition piece. That that actually just gave me chills right now, just hearing that. I was like, because that just screams out the nationals to me for some reason. It's just when I hear that, and then the gate drops after, it's like, you lost me at Let's Get Ready, and it's like, oh, forget it. So, good old Red Bud. This is, uh, uh, yeah, I'd say the best track of the circuit. Just the viewing points, just the track itself is always top notch. You can't go wrong with Red Bud. At least this one. I don't know about the Motocross Nations version, but this one, you know. Red Bud, we all know and love for sure. Fourth of July weekend. Got the USA gear there with, uh, I believe it's Christian Craig. Yep. It's on, uh, on the Keiko bike there. Everyone's flying. Webb is, I believe, catching Martin in this moto, I believe. So, or is that segment? I'm not sure. You don't see this much of the 125 class or 250 class now. Hit Rocco's Leap on the 250. This is cool. Webb, Martin, Battle, Position, and both hit the Leap. It's crazy how they're doing on 250s. 
250s. And that's the good thing about that Lorocracy too. You can either launch it or you can scrub the hell out of it. So yeah, you see Webb now hunting down Martin there. Taking the win there. Here's second though, 250 going off. Guy B getting the shot. I had planned that one. That was not like, oh, he's going to shot get out of the way. It was more like, let's get a photo guy capturing a high speed shot. So Guy B happened to be there and he got in the video. So he's been in, he's photo bombed. So he's probably the ultimate photo bomber in motocross over the years. So, but. That's not his fault. That's just people people shooting the photos of him. So, um, yeah. So here we go. Second mode, two fifty going off, and Star Bikes are killing it. Jerry Martin, Cooper Webb, Jerry Martin chasing down. I believe Marvin right there. That's not a cool thing too. You see the options of lines and stuff. Like this is such a there's no such thing as a one line track at Red Bud. You know you have plenty of space to. You know, make ground stuff like good example right there. Inside line, inside, outside, base come out the same spot. Just some great racing. This edge of your seat stuff here, folks, that's for sure. So, but, you know, like little bobbles like that, you know, it just shows you how tough it is out there. And it's just, it doesn't show that the This watch this scrub from Aaron. <laughs> just nuts. <laughs> Crazy. Richard Sterling over there, watching over, taking out his, his rider, Jeremy taking the win at Red Butt there, cheer him on, so, Jeremy's good spot here, Webb, not entirely pumped. So that's a shot you don't usually get sometimes, Byers just getting a just real reaction off the track, just being like, fuck, just couldn't do it and stuff, so, um, this is Red Butt fans at its most. A little bit of a uh, little bit of ass abuse on that one, but other than that, that's Red Bud fans for you. Pop B is where it's at, and now with 450 Moto One going off, and this is where Justin's just taking that Red Bud, um, Red Bud, Bud's Creek confidence, and just pouring into Red Bud here. So he's got Dungeon on his tail, but he don't care. He's just gonna keep doing his deal and. Honestly, this dungeon gets around him and stuff, but just a great battle. And but yeah, with these shows, it was just um, you know, you travel the country too. Like this was um, this was actually the f this uh, was kind of like the second trek cross country was starting at this round here at Redbud. So I think we had a week off be before this round, I believe, and then um, it was Redbud, and then I went to Millville. So we, like I said, we, I drove to all twelve. Of them, so. We went from Red Bud and then went to Spring Creek right after this. And then we went to Washougal right after that. And then on the way back from Washougal, we hit Loretta's for like a few days and then went back home. So <laughs> that was all within like three weeks. So, but it only got, it, it got crazier at the end. So, um, as far as distance drives and stuff and everything. But, but NBC covered the bill. So it worked out all right. Well, we're in tearing the vehicle, which I don't have anymore. I don't have the van anymore. So, um, trade that in to get a little, uh, little dinky car to drive around in. So, but it's all good. But uh, that was impressive to see Justin there. He's out front here, Moto Two here. And you see, he's got number five behind him. Head up to the rock of sleep here. Or if these in the inside turn, hit the block of sleep. Like nothing. Anderson getting a little closer. I think that was Travis Sewell, I believe, getting a little closer there. So. But, you know, it's all these clips just showing, uh, like I said, it's the brutal, brutal, brutal environment that motocross is and how tough it is. You know, the air horns going off, all this. I mean, it's... As you can see, I just stay in this corner for three laps. <laughs> and then Justin grabbing the win. Very pumped. He's very pumped. He's like, let's bring it on. Next six rounds, let's do it. So... Pretty cool shot there. No, that's it's a good day to Justin. Probably one of his better days for sure. Can't complain about that. And Spring Creek comes in. That's the thing though. You go from Bud's Creek, Red Bud, Justin's killing it to now you're pretty much in Dunchy's not literal backyard because that goes some more to the Martins, obviously, which obviously Jeremy there getting the whole shot, but you know, you're back in 
Dungey's home turf now, so it's it, it played uh, Dungey's favor a little bit, you know, I think, but I don't think that's just an excuse or anything, it's just the way it is, so. But uh, no, this was a really great race, too. You know, Webb's making moves, Martin's making moves, and you know, if you have, like, Tavachi and Hampshire kind of here mixing it up, you know. Any battles I see on the track like this, I always try to capture, because you never know how it's going to turn out. It might turn out to be nothing, just a simple pass, a little outside inside situation, or take out, <laughs> or T bone, or anything else. That was close. I was getting really close right there, so. Very rutted chatapult right there. <laughs> I don't want to hook a foot peg on that one. Like the dirt come off the tire there, Kyle Peters there. It's pretty cool. Like I said, all things I see in these shots or whatever I get, I you know that's why I throw them up because you know nice little low camera shot, low angle shot there. Something different. A little bag of tricks there I have at angles. So really, just what I see, I'm like, oh, let's give this a shot. I'm like, all right, that's cool. I think that shot was that starts. I was using a bunch of like promos and stuff too. I think so from that season. But um, well, now Martin there. Scrub it away. It's Jeremy Martin, so. Yeah, he, he falls in a very, situ very um, peculiar situation like, hey, this is my backyard, shoot. I can win this. Yeah, I believe he did go on win this one, I believe. Actually, I don't think he won it. I think he got the points lead, but I didn't think he did. I don't know. Five years ago, so I don't remember much of it. Barsh with the start here, starting off 450. Spring Creek, so still coming off a little bit of a good charge here, but Dungey's already up front. There's Justin right there. He's like, probably said, son of a bitch, let's go. Get it done. Like Dustin Pipes, looked over at me. I don't think he did, just duck. He's ducking roost stuff. But, um. That's the thing with these videos, like these raw videos, that's why you guys like them, it's just the natural sounds of them, so. There's Pike and Nicoletti battling for it. Once Phil's doing the triple, double-double single, triple-double up. Then, I don't know what happened, Weston's bike here. Just cutting out, Phil's just like, what the hell? Keep going. <laughs> Not a deep breath there from Josh Grant. I was really trying hard to, to get the the view of how steep that hill is. I, mean, I walked up like halfway up. I'm like, oh, I'm good. So it's so hard to get over that triple double up the hill. You know, see 450s having a little bit of a trouble getting over it. You know, it's tough. It's just a cool section because you know this 450s just wide open up the hit and stuff and everything to hit him. But yeah, number five. Can't can't bet against that guy. Taking a win there and that looked changed up. A little chopper flying by right there. Justin with other jeez. <laughs> the outside they're really up. Just crazy start. And this is pretty much my only no, nope, this is my only crash, but like, I didn't get any crashes this year at all until that one. That's actually Tony Archer, buddy Tony, from Maryland there and stuff. He's actually wrenching for the TLD team now. Uh, just took a nasty hit there on the inside of the corner. I don't know what happened there. I think he was on hit opposite right now, but that was a nasty hit. Yeah, I didn't get any crashes at all that season until that one, which that one was like a, you know, was it, in, it was in frame, but it was really small in frame and stuff, but not to get picky or anything, but it's just one of those crashes where, you know, you're just like, whoa. I think in Iron Man, Iron Man, I got a couple of them, so that was like, I'm like, really? I got the crashes now, like, right at the last race of the because no one crashed. Everyone was fairly safe. Obviously, Tomax crashed. Yeah, Thunder Valley did not get that, but, you know, can't be everywhere, so. Even though it seems like I'm everywhere, I can't be everywhere. Dungey won once it. Shift of... Shift in the championship now is going toward him now, so there's Barsh is probably just like, all right, try to regroup next round, try to get back at it, but Dungey's turned back around again. So, thing is, when you point a camera to crowd people, they will do that. So, 
I have the power. Yeah. <laughs> Washougal. I love Washougal. I don't know. It's just the, it's the trees. It's the atmosphere. It's the it's the Northwest. I think just because I'm never never the only time in the Northwest before was Washougal in 2012. I think. Other than that, that's the second time I've been there. So. Hampshire almost taking us photo guys out. Thanks for crashing early. Uh, Christian Craig, I believe, out front here. So this track was, you know, that's the thing people say. You know, people say, oh, washougal has got the greatest dirt, best dirt in the series. On the surface, yeah, but you got to dig down a little bit, and then you see all those slick spots in that thing. Man, that track is, especially in a rain like this, it is stupid slick. That's their sand section, which is, you know, obviously you get to the top couple inches, it's good, but down underneath there's a base that's just super glassy, hard, and everything, all that, so, you know, it's a really slick technical track if you get down to that, especially when it rains like this, it just makes it even worse. Like, you, you can easily just pitch a bike one way and be done, so. It's a great battle there, Marvin gets by wet, takes the win. TLD guys getting shot. Horsepower Hill. This is a different view of Horsepower Hill than I usually see, so seeing from way back there. I think there's another shot, I think, with Webb and Bart and Battling coming up, I think. That was um, a pretty cool thing. That's the thing. That jump turned into a scrub jump. Crazy. That's actually where Canard crashed, I think, 2011 or something like that. I think crashed that one year. Or 2013, I think it was. But yeah, this, this shot I was talking about. Just you don't see really see this view that much on TV, and so because TV cameras are right all the way up on top of the hill up there, so um, so it's always cool to see different angles of these. You know, usually horse by her, you look how long and high it goes up. It's like cool to get a whole back shot of it. So like sometimes when I watch like even supercross, motocross race on TV, you know, especially like a supercross race when like a whoop section or something, I always like to see the back of the whoop section. Yeah, see the front. See, yeah, obviously it's a great shot, but. Sometimes you want to change up. You want to see the back of the section because you want to see what the riders are actually going through. You know, the whoops can be rutted or whatnot. So sometimes looking back, you know, back behind a rider through a section gives them a perspective of what the rider is seeing. You know, and realizing why it's so hard. So Webb taking the overall win there. The two fifties championships is going crazy in the two in the two fifty class. Four fifties. I believe that's a couple of New Yorkers, Phil and Justin leaning out the way there. This is the second moto start. Uh, there was no way I would <laughs> went over from that spot to the other <laughs> in one moto. So, uh, but you know, big, I always be always a big fan of getting a rider behind. You know, just to change up an angle. Justin flying up horsepower hill. You see, goodbye. You can see what they're going going toward and what they're going through. It's always a interesting angle. Um, it's more perspective than anything else. Leslie trying to. Find any line possible within those yellow markers, so cool shot here. <laughs> Wheeling over the bump to get over to get much traction going up the hill on a 450. I mean, just Justin's on it here, but I think he went down a little bit later in this race, so and I think Doji came by and won it, so but um, that was a frustrating time for Justin for sure because he just feels like it's slipping away, like he's out there leading right now. It's like, all right, getting back on it, and then I think he went down somewhere and Dungey ended up taking the win, so. But, uh, like this section's right here, just deep mudded up. I mean, it wasn't rain. Unfortunately, it wasn't rain that day. So this is up on the hillside up here, looking down. Just just all the fans, all the just uh, just everyone kind of sardined in, looking at the races and stuff. It's just cool. It's, it's a good crowd shot. Um, to see that. So our horse back here again. See rocks and watches bike just slip, 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 slip. Man, like I say, these pro guys, they just shake that stuff off. If that was me, I'd be like that canard up that hill, by the way, just fast. Three-way battle up front, Barsha, Dungy, Roxon. Good stuff. You're a fan, you're losing your mind right now, including me. So I'm shooting, I'm like, man, get closer, battle up more. <laughs> just, I think that good shot. But it is cool there, Roxon. A little scrub in action right there. Weston trying to get through those loops. Just just Crazy methodical through there. Sick shot, Justin there. Skin whoops off him now. Panic Revan. Can't go wrong. Dungy with the win. Yeah, they're saying winningest rider in Washington history, so he knows that track very well. Now, here's my true home national, Unadilla. This is my first ever national, was in 1999 here at Unadilla. 
It used to have the up and down grass start, and it was a grass track pretty much back then. Um, always love this race. Just this race is always love being here for the national. Yamaha guys run the uh, yellow plastics. I think it's 15th anniversary of Yamaha, so they ran the old um, the old uh, plastics there. But now this this has always been a great great event. I look to over every year whenever I have a chance to do outdoor nationals, cover them or be at them, whatever. You know, it's always something like, yeah, I want to try to do this one. And, you know, um, I've actually it's weird that, that my racing days when I used to ride, you know, race a lot. Um, here at Unadilla, I never rode the U2 track or the amateur track. I've always ridden the pro track because in 99 was the last year they ran uh, amateur day, uh, your amateur day on the pro track. That was the last day they ran it. Uh, last year they ran it. Um, and then I rode that track again in 2002 or 2001. I think 2002 it was. It was a parts unlimited. Oh, Marvin getting a little whiskey. Um, for It was a parts unlimited ride day. I think it was Monday after the national. And um, uh, a buddy of mine, Frank... Um, and um, his dealership, um, 23 Motorsports at the time up in Jersey, um, helped me out and stuff. And they, they were hooked up with Parts Unlimited and stuff. So they got us into a uh, ride day there. So and it was awesome riding the track after the National and stuff. So um, they groomed out some spots. I think took out Screw You and stuff, but it was awesome. Um, so it's weird. So going to this track, I've never been there. I've, I've covered the U2 track, obviously, but I've never done the, uh, um, never, I've never rode it. Always rode the National track. But yeah, some great racing here. I think the web went down this race, I believe, too. I think I had a clip of them down, but not falling. So, which is not great sounds of the Nationals content just to have a rider just laying down hurt. So, but, um, so. Yeah, getting the roost going up that hill, too. That's always cool, too. Jeremy right here, a little, little, little whip out there. Not bad. Another European style track and another European winning, so. <laughs> Alright, we're grabbing the win there and stuff. Tim Carr on the mic. So it sounds a little better when he's on the mic for some reason. Boxing going down hard off the start there. Dark down, just whatever. And God finished the race though. So. It's coming down. This is like the second gravity cavity, I guess they call it. The Gravity cavity with a turn in it because right next to it is the actual gravity cavity. So, Justin, you know, Justin, you know, likes you know, a lot. I think his 450 debut was there, so, and all that. So, yeah, he's um, out there at Honda and he battled with Dungey that one year. That was, I was actually covered that one. I actually covered his whole day there for Ally. It was a day with type video, and that was pretty cool. They like that neon color, neon yellow there. From, Rocks in that gear setup. I approve of that. Cunningham ran the way edge of the track there. Making it work. Kyle's a good dude. We got a bowl eventually, but maybe one day. Maybe we were old and like really old. We'll bowl a match one day, but we talk about bowling so much that, you know, we'll see one day. Dungey trying to cross over every line possible, but not working. <laughs> so, so this section was pretty cool. Pretty simple, but you know, sky shot. Always oh, love the sky shot. Sky shot on press day, especially if Justin is there. <laughs> Can't go wrong with that. I did a press day there. I think there was a press day video from you and Dill. I think it was back like in 2013, uh, 2014. Uh, I think it was like 2013, I think it was. It was when he was on Honda. That press day video, you can watch on YouTube here and stuff. Um, this is I like to watch this above the bridge, both shots back and forward. Got a little crafty on that one because you're actually not supposed to allow to film from the bridge. But since I was, hey, since I'm producer director of this NPC Sports pre-show, I got a little leeway. So I was like, eh, let me just go where Dungey is every lap and just get on the bridge. And so I did a shot from him, him going through the, you know, under the bridge, and then one coming out and clip them, to, you know, cut them together and make it look good. But Dungey being a good rider right out looking at his own Bruce. Weird. But he won the race, so. And uh, he's getting closer and closer to that title right now. I think he was he only had to need a couple points, I think, to get over to, to clinch a title, so he's leaving you and Della's head up pretty good, knowing he's got this thing on lock. Can all over the podium ride. Give everybody a shower. Well, giving that guy more of a shower. 
you definitely get in the bottle if you get showered up like that. <laughs> so now, yeah. So this is what I was talking earlier about the road trip situation. So we went from U Loretta's to Unadilla, and then Una this is week after week. So Loretta's, then to Unadilla, and then to Utah. <laughs> so <laughs> go from New York to Utah. It was um, within a week. It was a lot, a lot of driving. You can't really miss a day. Oof. Jordan Smith going Superman through a uh, 180 there. So this track was just different. It's, I mean, I understand variety, but this track just seemed like it didn't really flow as much. Um, it had its sections, I guess, but I think the sections were just so, like, built for a certain thing, but there was no flow. That track had... It had a weird flow to it. I think... I don't know if it was just because it's a new new facility, new place, new track and everything, and everyone was kind of stitching, you know, kind of making their sections flow right, but... Utah just did not flow to me. Like, it just looked like the riders were just, like, out of their element a little bit. Um, big single air to landing. I mean, that's... Some sections were just a little bit, you know... A little, a little funky. I had some people ask, you know, talk to me after the race. They were like, I hope we never come back here. <laughs> I'm like... That's not, my pay, that's not my pay grade to make that decision, so... But, um... Nah, there's a heavy battle going for two for the championship going on here. This is actually the round before last. This is um, round 11. So, um, this championship's still up in the air. But given the minute, like, the track's cool and everything, but I think it just, just the flow of it was just a little off. I was just like, you know, like this section right here, a little, that's, a, that's an odd section. Like, that's not normal. I know you're testing riders and everything. I just didn't have a... This section got a little funky here, yeah, they're kind of cutting into the track a little bit. That was Davey out there with the flag, and actually they were, um, if you saw, I think that was Kerry Joe next to him, and they were writing down riders who were cutting over that inside line, so I saw that, I was like, okay, I'll just get one clip for the file, and I ended up throwing this video anyway, so. Um, yeah, because the riders are getting a little left there trying to get that low line, but. So, Jerry Martin, he's still got the red plate, takes the moto in there. He's on a good space now here. 450 classes is all all day. This is all look at number five. This is I think he only needed like a handful of points to clinch it. So I've actually clinched in the first moto, I believe, so. Um, it was pretty impressive. I mean, I don't think he needed to beat rocks in here, but I think it just needed just to, you know, get by him. Do we gotta do? We'll do a little Take the win. Very pumped. So right there he knew. He clinched the title and that was it. So second moto was just stamp on two wheels. Get you know, whatever moto bonus he got for it. Get a good finish and put it up. You know. But Roxon will finish this out. I mean he was you know, he's in the fight, but Dungeon's on it like that. I mean Justin was in it too, but you see Justin there just you know, got pro twelve rounds together and Someone who knows how to do that very well was was Dungey. That's why I never count the number five. But, you know, um, am I happy now we're not going back to Utah, I guess? I don't know. I mean, it's, like I said, it's just a weird track, just a weird layout. It wasn't like your normal, like, you know, like your Red Bud, Bud's Creek, you know, Dilla type places where they're just like, it gave that national feel. There, having it at a road course was like, Felt very manufactured in a way, but you know, I think um, you know they've done it. They learned and moved on, I guess. So, but not a fall of theirs. It's just the way way people take it. So, don't you get some little number one plate to add to that whole fame career? So, pump for him. I mean, you gotta work guys work hard at it. You know, team effort and stuff. That's what does it. We are off to the final round at Ironman. So here it is. Um, this round was a live show for us, so it was a little more hectic. Um, we had a, they had a Legends race going on. They had a ton of stuff going on this round that we had to focus on. So this felt like kind of another Hangtown type of event for me. Um, we were able to capture the first modes at least for this one, but um, you know. But I knew doing Ironman, we had to, like our live show was pretty good. I don't remember it really being that horrible. I think I remember it was was pretty solid show. Um, Big turning point right here. Marvin's bike. Marvin's bike kicks out. Done for the moto. 
pretty much that goes to championship with that. So that was a that was a that was a tough one to watch. So Webb's not really in the championship as much, I think. He's just in it. But for Jeremy Martin, though, it is it's all Jeremy Martin right now. So go up triple step up there, Webb. Martin just trying to make his way through and not sure if he knows this is what happened to Marvin. I don't know if the mechanic ever told him. Plessinger, he's known to be very ride very well at Iron Man stuff. This section right here, watch Webb hops over this big bump on the inside, but then watch Jeremy and the next clip right here. Hits the bump and endos, so <laughs> just shows you the type of technicality this track can get. So but as you can see here, Plessinger, he was he does very well in Iron Man for some reason. I mean this GNC that he's had his experience here with, with uh, GNC racing before. So I think the dirt wise he knows how it reacts and everything, how it how it goes. So but this one I cut a little differently. I went two fifty moto one, four fifty 50 moto one, because the four fifty class was kinda like, ah, let's just get it done out of the way type motos, you know, because Champ just ready to decide it, so almost had Dutchie eating dirt right there. Almost. But He's not good. So, him and Purcell battling. So, who knew the next year? I think that's next next year or two years after is when um, Hurlings came over and walloped everybody. So, so Justin Bogle get back out there. So, but yeah, it's just, um, yeah, for the class that day it was more like, all right, let's, Dungeons won the title. Let's. Get whatever bonus money we need, pack up things and go. Do a little battle in here. That's about it. So, 40 class, I did the 450 modes. Right, just basically got that out of the way so I can end it off with the 250 mode too. So, uh, I like this shot. It's cool. Kid just popped up out of first turn. That's those memories of a long time. Pretty cool. That's the thing. It looks not that. So, you look that was that was from the fans. I, I, that was from the fans. That was I was actually on the track, but just on there's a little strip of area where fans were kind of lined up and I just was, you know, threw my little bit of height in there, took my toes up and got a higher angle of it. So, good battle, Dungey rocks in again. A big up a triple at Iron Man. Not Godzilla, Godzilla's a little in the back there, but uh, just, just, <laughs> that's actually just like the ones up, Godzilla's going this way, you got another big down going this way, you got a up a triple on the up way, it's like, cool section. Carry Hart, cheering on Roxon right there. Pumped out he did. Does well. Finishes off on the hideout. Great car, Michael. Congratulating Dungey there. And there's the last moto there, 250 moto 2. I don't know if it's the last moto of the day. I don't think, because the 450, 250, they switch them every now and then, so it's like, I'm not exactly sure if this was the last mode of the day. This was, this was Cooper Webb, I believe, scrubbing a little too much. And if you hear the announcing, there's no word of it. It's like, there's a huge crash on the upper triple, and I think that was Webb that got, he just kicked out the back end, and that was it, so. This is Jesse Nelson right here, coming through, and over the bars. I was like, that was my crash of the year, was right there. <laughs> I was like... Really, <laughs> I had to wait till basically almost the last mode of the year for that to happen. So, but you know, right spot, right time, or right spot, wrong time. However you look at it, but um, yeah, plus is right there too. But I mean, this was a this was a kind of a like, oh, okay, we're good. But at this point, we knew the show wasn't really going to happen next year. There was um, this is the kind of the last event for Ally Sports um in motocross. So Ally Sports would later fall would dissolve away. In that time, so um, it was an ending there. Plessinger, great ride, and Jeremy goes riding that bike for the win for the title. So big, big day for him. Can't get any more pumped about that, man. That's cool. But uh, now for me, though, it was like just like it was the end of a grueling summer. It was tough. <laughs> The shows I did, we, we, it was tough. It was a tough gig. So. so. So there you go. That is it. That's the uh, 2015 and Sounds of Nationals video, best of video um, that I did from that year, and it was a, uh, um, and it was it was a crazy summer. It was like I said, the most 
that was the busiest I've ever been as far as the project goes, as far as a shoot gig or anything. So, um, again, I appreciate the, you know, the crew that came in, you know, that was able to get on, you know, work the show and everything. It went great. Um, you know, it was, we had some hurdles to jump over for sure, but I think any first show like that, you know, where you're kind of like trying to pave a new way into some sort, it's, it's tough to do. So, and, uh, you got to have those unexpected hurdles and whatnot to come through. And I think we, uh, we did a good job with it. So, but, I uh, was happy to be part of it and everything and try to you know, move forward to the next one. So, But, um, all right, well, that'll do it for this little commentary thing. Uh, check out for future ones and stuff. We'll do more of them. Um, I, this has been fun to do, I think. So uh, we'll do more of them, and uh, we'll check it out eventually. So, But um, but thanks for tuning in. Um, if you got any more ideas as far as maybe one video you want me to comment on, talk about a little bit, a little backstory and stuff, uh, hit the comments down there below, and um, we'll throw out another video and stuff. And, and uh talk about because all these videos have some story to them um that i can probably figure out in this empty brain of mine that i can figure out and <laughs> talk about so and uh and all that so all right guys thanks for tuning in and uh we'll see you around and um stay tuned for a little bit of a we do a status of mxpt video eventually soon a little live stream thing uh talk about what's going on with uh mxptv starting off um uh for this year and it's still around believe it or not mxptv is still around it's just might bump up a little bit more this year, so stay tuned for that. So, all right, guys, see you later.